straight in, start of the year. Let's talk about a new film. It's brilliant. No holding back. Listen, congratulations on this. Thank you so it's, much. It's really, it's just really lovely to see. I mean, I imagine for you that this role as a as an actor, it kind of gives you so many different things to do in one role. Mm. There are lots of asks of this character. Yeah. Was that kind of immediate from the script when you first got it and, and part of the appeal, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, she's in every scene, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then on top of that with the baby and yeah. also this, this aspect of motherhood that I haven't experienced myself. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of being the, the beacon of the film and thinking, oh, wow, okay, how do I explore this and make sure that it's truthful and that women watch it and they go, oh, God, I relate to that or that was me or, you know, those yeah. were the kind of uh, the big things at the forefront of my mind when when taking it on. And also as well, like I, when I met Mahalia, I could, you know, I was a fan of her work previously. I'd watched, um, she did a film on Channel 4 called Ellen with Jesse Bard. And yeah. I remember watching it when I was younger and being like, oh, you know, I was doing like casualty and stuff at the time. I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> like, that's what I want to do. <laughs> and then when, when the email came through with her name, I was like, oh my God, here oh, it wow. is. Um, but just also like speaking with her and realizing how naturalistic and raw and stripped back she wanted to go. Yeah. I was like, you know, which can be can be really exposing, but also um, really exciting. Well, from from having the, the luxury of chatting to you in the past about mm. a couple of roles that have like help. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, in terms of kind of, you know, there's a framework of what's asked of you, mm. but it's it's your arena. Yeah. It's your playroom. It's your opportunity to to feel and navigate mm -hmm. those things. Was that? kind of what she was offering as well with this in terms of talking about that naturalistic thing. So there's some really lovely moments in this that you feel were so genuine and so mm. reactive to your play partner in the scene or whatever. Yeah, do you know what? There was a lot of moments like that on on set. I, one, I think it's Mahalia and the way that she directs. Yeah. I think she's an incredibly sensitive person, mm -hmm. as am I, yeah. you know, and like through working with her, I was like, actually, it's can be your superpower, you know? I think yeah. sometimes people can see sensitivity as being kind of fragile, but I think especially in, in you know, in relation to this film, it's integral. Um, so I think there was something about her sensibility and also us having the baby on set that just caught, kind of calmed everything and steadied everything yeah. and um, created lots of really spontaneous moments, you know? sometimes that we didn't want <laughs> and then yeah. but you know there's so many within the film that weren't supposed to happen and yeah. were kind of birthed out of out of that yeah um and you know may was also great in like just keeping a track on her emotional trajectory yeah because i like i just done theater and was like living living a story through from start to finish every night yeah which i'd never known before but then when i came back onto a film set i was like what do you mean we're doing like scene 90 and then scene four and then scene 34? Like, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. And just having to recalibrate my brain yeah. and go, oh, wait, you have to be so clear on where you're going. And me and May would always have those kinds of conversations, especially in regards to emotion, because I think if you was to think of yourself in this situation, I think a lot of us would think, I couldn't do it. I'd be crying. I'd yeah. be beside myself, and, and which I was kind of saying and May was very much reminding me and saying you know she isn't afforded the time she doesn't have the luxury and also she has to push forward for the baby yeah um, her priorities are different yeah and I think that's why the kind of moment she breaks at the end of the film is is more poignant in that way because yeah. she's finally able to feel well I think it's lovely as well because there's there's so much that she's not seeing but we're seeing mm, in a way as well you know yeah. in terms of moments where you know, internalization that's going on with the character or whatever and yeah. stuff that's not dialogue because a lot of the time she's got no one to talk to. Yeah. And so, but we can still feel and get a sense of where she is emotionally and and stuff as well. You know, and that's down to your performance and where she is oh, in that thank moment. Thank you. It's true though, she doesn't speak, like, she's very observant. She's the yeah. opposite to me. She's the opposite to me. She's very introverted, which I am not. Um, so there was a lot of me having to like really hold myself. Hold it back, Jodie. Yeah, I'm like, oh, rein it in. Um, but yeah, like a lot, a lot of it is her watching, observing, listening, and um, like you said, not 
often yeah. speaking um which is yeah it's a different I guess a different type of acting yeah I am um, when I when I'm coming to talk about music and the, when mm. I when you look when you when you look at your uh, career mm. there's a lot of musical moments which we'll go into in a second <laughs> There are a lot. There are, there's a not lot, a musical, not yeah, a musical yeah, very, yet, which, but there's a lot of moments with music connected <laughs> to them or part of it. I love and it. And this film is a good one as well yeah. because there's that that really lovely scene with you and um, Catherine and Benedict. Yeah. The, the dance scene, which I believe is an example of you being told to rein it in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that was. I was exercising. It was a full moon. And I was definitely ex- like getting rid of some demons in that. I remember May coming in and she was like, Jesus. Bring it down. I was like, okay. I was like, I'm like, okay, you wrote that? Okay. <laughs> We're not at a rave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of, it's, it is that thing though of these, you know, the music and the release that it yeah. can give you. And you really see that in the kind of, the really, the way that she shot it and the way that yeah. kind of you react. What was the reality on set of, of what was, was, was music played? Because I know sometimes what you played on set is not what yeah. ends up in the film. Sometimes you're dancing to no music, which <laughs> is torture, actually. Um, not even a bod. Not even, sometimes not. Um, no, what, what was great, well, because Benedict actually brought that song in. The Car yeah, 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 yeah. Which, like, I've played so often with my friends, so I was like, oh, this is brilliant that he's, like, thought of this and thinks this is good. And then, so we played it out loud. I think we had we had speakers that night. It was, like, a Friday night at like 10.55, like we had five minutes to shoot this one section because we'd been doing the dialogue all day. It was a full moon. The moon was like, wow. it was humongous. Like it was really quite magical. And they just played the song on a loop twice. Susie Lavelle, La- La- our DOP was on handheld, was like, you know, in there with us. Yeah. We were dancing around this fire. So it was all very, very kind of, it had to be very quick, but it, it just felt very cathartic. Yeah. Um, and luckily we were able to keep the song because we were worried at first about, um, well, obviously, because then you're like, oh, we love this song. And then it's like, well, this person would like $6 million <laughs> for you to <laughs> yeah. play this for song in the movie. Seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, crap, maybe we won't go with that song. Um, but we, could, we, we were able to keep it, so yeah. it was perfect. Um, whose choice was it? The um, Dirty Dancing song. I've had the time of my life. Where were you? <laughs> that was a collective decision. Okay. There was like a list of songs going around of like what would be a good song, and then like we'd get a list, and then everyone would be on set being like, "Bigger, uh, oh no!" Like like decide on what was good or not. Um, but that just felt like it was one you could really. Um, Again, release, belt out, like everyone knows it, you know? It's yeah. one of those things, it's like, I think it doesn't matter how often you've watched Dirty Dancing, like, you know that song, yeah. whether you like it or not. And and it's lovely because that's one of those moments that you feel that you were given kind of room to sort of just see what happens. Yeah. And when Catherine kind of, I think she says something about, oh, and then that bit where they go like this. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's kind of, it just feels so natural. Yeah, well, like, I, I think it all, I think that also came from like the fact we were like, we were in Scotland, up a mountain. It was sideways rain. You know, we w- there was like one track with the, all the, you know, the kind of dollies, lo- location vans. Mm-hmm. It was like the, the environment which we were working in was a little, it was quite crazy and, and everything had to be quick. And I think that created like an energy mm-hmm. within us that like, like you said, yeah. made those moments. But May was also always encouraging us to like, just find the truth in it. and. Yeah. And play, especially because there's, you know, there is quite a lot of, um, you know, quite, it's, a lot of the films quite somber. So it's like it was also important to find the the levity within yeah. it because that's also true. You know, it's like you might be going through through something in your life that is hideous, but you know, a lot of people meet those moments with humor. Yeah, you know, that's absolutely. also a defense or a coping mechanism mechanism. Yeah. Uh, so we always wanted to find those those beats. Was 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 music ever a conversation with me with regards to the character with mother in terms of because when we find her, you know, the radio's on and yeah. prosthetics are amazing. amazing. I know. Like I've been pregnant twice, mm. you know, and that that little line I know down and it's just it's it was so brilliant. I have so many pictures on my phone. You have no idea that I'm gonna when the, when the film is actually released. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a post because I was just like, I was so amazed by it. You know, Incredible. especially at the start of the movie, 
when she's going into labor, mm. that prosthetic was like from my collarbones to my to my hips and it took four hours. Yeah. And, you know, they took molds of my, you know, my breast. So everything was like, you know, looked yeah. correct. And, and it was um, hand painted, like, wow. And also, like, just to, as a like as a woman to sit there and have that on and be like, whoa, like to have a glimpse of yourself. Like yeah, that. And, absolutely. And also, you know, get a, get a sense of the uh, weight and just <laughs> circumference How of you your body. About? Yeah, sit down, start, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. it was extraordinary, and I think you know again. That was another thing I loved about May was like she didn't want to shy away from um, how hard that can be yeah. and the kind of the how brutal yeah. labor and a motherhood can be and showing the female body and in in all its in all its different forms and that was really exciting mm. to me and I think because I felt safe with her um, and I could see how each beat was integral it yeah. was like let's go you know yeah. let's do it. Yeah. Did, did did she talk about music though in terms of is that, sorry is that, yeah is that ever the a conversation with like yeah I may well I'd I'd we'd always send each other songs and right. I've definitely got a playlist on my on my phone cool. for woman different I I do that a lot for for roles to be honest yeah little little songs that I whether it's like um you know a certain song that I connect to a scene or yeah a character um. And I sometimes, depending on my relationship with the director, I'll share them. You know what I mean? Like sometimes yeah. I'm like, this is a, this is a, like, yeah. you know, this is a good relationship. I want to send you my music. Yeah. Or sometimes I'll be like, you know, I'm just gonna keep I'm this to my, my yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep this one to myself. <laughs> Listen to it on my own. Yeah, but may you know we may loved all that kind of stuff. Or we'd you know if I read a poem, I'd send her yeah. um, poetry and. Um, that's always the most exciting, you know, when you kind of have that relationship with someone where any source of little inspiration mm. or photograph, it's like, oh, this is making me feel something. Yeah. You know, we're never gonna use it for anything, yeah. but it's a, it's an essence. Because, you know, you mentioned coming off doing theatre into this mm. and, um, and music with that yeah, and Rebecca Self-Esteem's yeah. music for, for um, Tessa's world and yeah. that experience was extraordinary. How, how did that, when did that come into that production in terms of was it there for rehearsals or you know it's so the, because it's yeah. such a it's it is a character really yeah within yeah. within that that performance that play sorry do you know what it was um I mean I don't know exact timings but I remember James Beerman our amazing producer he'd he'd told me before we'd started rehearsals that he was in touch with Rebecca and yeah. that she was loved the play, wanted to do the soundtrack. So we knew it was happening. Yeah. And then I feel like as we were in rehearsals and a bit before, Rebecca was kind of working on that with Max, um, our sound op. And we got the music like the final week of rehearsals. And we were we were in we were, you know, we'd done a couple of runs and we were final ones with the music. And I remember Rebecca had come in and mm -hmm. sat and watched the the run and it was just so profound like I, it makes my eyes water because like even when I think of the final song which was mm. like an adaptation of one of her own songs but she'd slowed it right down and just gave it this completely different feel um and it was that moment when we were like wow you know like you said it was like it was like a character that we were missing and it, it all just it all just came together and changed the pace and the tempo yeah. and you know it was almost like her friend yeah, well, I said, I remember texting Rebecca one night and um, and I just said, like, your music literally carries me on that stage. Like, that's what it felt like. It was like, it was, it was gently, <laughs> you know, like, come on, you know, it's, yeah. I'm with you kind yeah. of thing. That's, that's how it felt for me when I was up there. Yeah. Yeah. Because did this came about or the script came to you whilst... Whilst you were still, yeah, it did. It did. It was when I was doing the the London run, because um, wow. I remember we did a couple of chemistry reads um, when I was doing the play. And I felt terrible because I was like, you know, I was like, I'm not surprised. I mean, for I saw me, I was... who saw that show, I mean, it was just extraordinary. But it was amazing to. I mean, it's so interesting. It's so amazing to be able to sit in a room with different actors and read, especially when you're, you know trying to find a, um, another part of a relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And Joel was just so... Oh, he's so great. He's so good. He's so underused. 
He really is. He's and just... he's... The thing is, like, he, he'd come in the room and and he didn't really say an awful lot and just wanted to kind of crack on with it. And, <laughs> and he... The really interesting thing was, like, he hardly looked at me when doing the scenes, mm -hmm. but there was such a, um, um, like, a rapport between us. Like, I felt like I'd known him for years, mm -hmm. and I thought, it's so true of, like... Because I think sometimes as an actor, when you're like, okay, you're going for a chemistry read, you're like oh, well, I better find that chemistry, you know? And it's like, and then yeah. there's some like really heavy eye it's contact going date. on. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> is it here? You Five know? minutes, speed date, go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Tol came in and did the complete opposite. And yet there was still such, such a shorthand. And, yeah. um, you know, it was really beautiful. I remember when he left, I was like, there he is, Aww. you know? So it was so clear and... He's so dry and witty, but then also has like a real access to um, his vulnerability and his emotions, and yeah. um, which we really needed for for our yeah. I love that scene where the where you, with him particularly where you arrive at his parents' house and mm. he's kind of doing that thing of bringing everything in from the car, and he's got these kind of really kind of almost background conversations going on with his dad about mm. why didn't you leave London earlier and all that kind of thing, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's but it's such a he really draws you in mm. immediately at that bit in terms of that relationship. Mm. The really, you know, can you learn so much of that dynamic from those from that moment? Yeah. yeah, it's really brilliant. Yeah, and I think, as I think, it's. I, I mean, for me, he's, everything he does just feels so real. Yeah. Um, you know, he's not. I don't know. It just always feels very rooted in reality because he's not. He's not trying to do anything. He's just mm. kind of telling, just telling the truth. Yeah. Um, which is is so exciting to, to yeah. work alongside. Yeah, he's brilliant. I'm excited mm. to see what he does what he does next yeah. as well. Um music then. Yes. <laughs> I mean it was um I mean it's I mean Killing Eve is an example. We were yeah. talking to David Holmes a couple of weeks ago about the amazing score on the show. Yeah. But music pops up and she's constantly thrown out a tune <laughs> left, right and centre, you know, it's like it's brilliant. It's it, was that <laughs> was that in script? Or was that kind of, I don't know, did it come through? You know, whether it's the... Is this the Elton John? Well, there's the Elton John, there's the Primal Scream track, yeah. Moving On Up, there's um, um, One Way or Another. What was One Way or Another on? One Way, or when she went... Of course! Yeah. I mean, there's loads there of... There's quite a lot. Yeah, we scratch the surface, there's... She's a wee singing, you know, she's... Well, she, <laughs> she likes to think she is. Yeah. In the car, listen to your heart. Oh, yeah! Yeah! I don't. God, now I'm like. Oh, now I'm like cringing at all of them. No, they're but they're like they're little character sort of reveals. In I mean, a way. all great songs. Yeah, the Crocodile Rock, the one is. Genius. I know. Well, Crocodile. Yeah, Crocodile. Yeah, that was that's definitely my my favorite. I think because it was so clear, you know, why it was there and what it was for, and just the absurdity of that scene being back in Russia with her like long lost family. Um, I didn't realise there were so many. Yeah. It's just how they all respond to that song physically. I absolutely love. <laughs> I might have to go back and rewatch that you clip. Should. Yeah, Give yeah, yeah. Give yourself the luxury because yeah. it's brilliant. But yeah, but like, it, it's um, the Primal Scream one, Moving On Up, which is a really lovely version mm. of it. You know, it's not kind of lifted from the, from the, the Primal Scream version. It's your or her interpretation. My, my version. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I know, but it was also never clear. It was like, she's not really a singer. So it's like, you know, <laughs> you know the part of you goes, well, I'm never going to get a singing role if I do it like this. <laughs> um, you know, what would she sing like? Um, they're always terrifying. Like, I remember that one. I was like, first scene coming back after being away for a year. And they're like, okay, you're going to stand up in this church yeah. in your choir outfit and you're going to sing Primal Scream to... 40 essays in a real like, kind of great. specific <laughs> way as well it's beautiful thanks Jesus. yeah it's like Jodie does choir boy. I'm like dying inside <laughs> <laughs> right now oh but yeah I'd love to do a musical would you yeah I would love to it'd have to be film I'd have to do a, a you know little pre-record thing would but... you do like a biopic of someone then or a kind of ooh I mean I'd never say never yeah have to be right though. It, there's so many, isn't there? There's so yeah. many biopics. Because the um, also the fantasy 
Mm. Cover for free guy. Of course. Yes. <laughs> See, you didn't think you had any music to talk about, but you got loads. Um, yeah. How did that come about? It come. It come about by. I think they always wanted the cover version, and I feel like Sean Levy, the director, had yeah. heard me like just humming and singing around set. <laughs> And was like, she's got, she's, yeah, he was like, (laughs) she can hold the tune. She might be able to do it. Um, And they asked, they were like, look, would you be up for doing this? And I was like, sure, okay. And they were like, you know, you'll go to LA, you'll go to Capitol Records. You're in like a booth where the Beatles have recorded. I was like, well, fitting. Um, (laughs) So I was like, it's in my blood. (laughs) Yeah, it was was written in the stars. but it was terrifying. I was speaking about it before, actually, because someone said that you have, like, a, a mantra or a motto to live by. And I'll never forget, like, doing, like, the first recording of it. And I was obviously, like, you know, do a good job, do the, like, you know, get the vibrato going. And um, <clears throat> someone just, like, came over the tan and was like, Jodie, we have a saying in the music industry. And I was like, mm-hmm. And he was, <laughs> and he was like, we say, if you think, you stink. And I was like, okay. So he's like, <laughs> he's like, stop thinking about it. And I was like... And it was like rolling, and I was <laughs> crying. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" But it's That's so brutal. true. It's brutal, but it's true. Okay, it's true. <laughs> Take <laughs> that so <laughs> Um But yeah, and then it and it made the because especially as well, like Sean and Ryan were always so many Easter eggs within the film, yeah. and I think they were like, actually, this would be kind of brilliant if nobody knew this was Jodie until the very end. Yeah. So it was a little Easter egg. Did yeah. you like that? That experience of being like a recording artist, like being in a proper, you know, in a recording studio, like you say, like. Um, no, no, <laughs> no, I didn't. It was quite lonely, and I don't, I don't like the fact that there's a there's a room with a glass yeah. frame, and you sing your song, and, and then it all goes dead are. silent, and they twirl around on their chairs. <laughs> they all have a little chat, and I think, oh god, what's he gonna say? And it's, we're going again. <laughs> You know, don't think. Yeah, yeah, don't God. think. Um, but yeah. So no, I don't know. I don't, I don't see myself as a recording artist, artist anytime soon. Okay. No, she, no. She, it's quite she, lonely. Yeah. You're in there on your own. Well, I, I like imagine. I like people around me. I like you know. I like teamwork. Well, I like the idea of you talking about doing a if you did a musical because it feels like there's the the kind of technology and stuffs there for being able to capture stuff real. Within a you know within a set within yeah. with, the, with your ensemble and all that kind of stuff rather than you being placed in a recording studio on your own and yeah well if it was solitude. for a, if it was for like a, if it was like for a musical film I think I'd be I'd be fine with it yeah um um oh man I'm desperate but, to see yeah. a musical I'd love to I mean I was obsessed with them growing up like when I was younger I was saying to my mom I'm like when I'm 18 I'm like I'm moving to London and I'm doing a three-year musical theatre course just so you know <laughs> I was like okay and then I kind of like I grew a bit and I got a bit I've got a bit long and lanky and my <laughs> and I was like I'm not the best dancer but I, I feel like I'm pretty good at acting so I kind of like just honed in on that what kind of musicals were you into then oh everything like cats guys and dolls did you see Cats? I did. Me too. It was Obsessed, amazing, wasn't it? I remember going to see it at the Empire Theatre. Look at the size when of the Kellogg's box. <laughs> <laughs> exactly when they all like run down the aisle. Yeah. I Cats. mean, I love the ori- the original film. Like, yeah. I always felt like Rum Tum Tugger in that film was like my first like, um, <laughs> like I'm gonna say sexual awakening, but it was. <laughs> I was having a moment where I was like, I think I'm attracted to a, a man in a cat outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that was a who real. sings? Who sings and dances? <laughs> who does the splits? That was real. Is he that the was kind real of Elvis one? The sort of kind of is that the yeah. one? Yeah. So he's, See, yeah, you yeah. remember? I remember. <laughs> he's got the kind of teddy boy shoes on, and he's got the kind of yeah, the yeah, quick shoulders. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. So. Oh man, yeah. Now I'm gonna go watch Cats after this for sure. But the um, bike riders, <clears> which is coming later on this year, which yeah. I'm really excited about. I was lucky enough to chat to Jeff about it. Um, uh, towards the end of last year and music with that. Oh my I God, mean, it's amazing. Kathy's world is just surrounded yeah. by music as well. Yeah. Did he play a lot on set with that? He didn't actually. No, he he, he always spoke about what, what he was kind of aiming for, but it wasn't until um, he, he did a screening in New York for me where I, I went and watched it on my own and I just remember being like, this is just so cool. Mm. You know, when you see the 
the world and the, the characters and the costumes and the and then the soundtrack it's just yeah. it's so effortlessly cool um and really um really transports you you know Absolutely. to that time it's it's um it's so special and i think actually <clears throat> i feel like the the soundtrack really energized me like i kind of came out and i was like yeah. I don't know. I just I had such a kind of buzz about me when I when I watched that film for the first time. Well, I think it's really important with that because it's 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 about a period, isn't it? It's about it is a period yeah. film really, and and sometimes directors will kind of d- deliberately move away from from it not being the music sort of timing and something. But mm. you needed it within this because yeah. of the jukebox season because yeah. of that whole thing. So again, it's another example of it feeling like a bit of a character in the yeah, as well. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's telling stories, it's telling situations as well between, you know, from between each of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The sets were remarkable. Yeah. You know, it's just so amazing when you get to work with people who are that, you know, so talented and so, like their attention to detail is so f- you know, kind of finite, and you walk yeah. into this set, and you, and then you see the work that's been, been happening yeah. months prior to when you've got to this moment <laughs> yeah. where you're about to le- read your lines. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Did does Jeff do much rehearsal then, or is, is he a kind of? No, we didn't do any rehearsal. We, I feel like I had a lot of calls, talks with Jeff on Zoom, um about Kathy, um, because, you know, we were fortunate. We had Danny Lyon's photography book. Yeah. And then I remember the first call I had with Jeff and he was like, just so you know, I have 30 minutes of audio of Kathy. And I was like, well, send me it now. <laughs> like, why are you, like, I need to hear this. Um, and I was like, whoa, like, I just couldn't believe. I was just transfixed by her yeah. and her, um, ability to tell stories and her dialect was so specific yeah like she was from Chicago but like when I was started working with my dialect coach Victoria Victoria was like all her vowels are complete contradictions she was like so you know you make a decision to like are you going to do a Chicago accent or are you going to try and emulate this woman off this Mm. audio and I was like I want to I want to try and get as close to this as I can so a lot of my conversations with Jeff were um were really kind of getting to the bottom of that and I'd yeah. send them voice notes and then he'd, you know, yeah. tell me what he thought and, and stuff like that. And and also she, you know, she's the kind of, um, um, she's the one who's telling the story within yeah. the, within this, you know, everything is from her POV, yeah. um, which is interesting because there's kind of a great power within that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which I loved, I loved. Oh, yeah, the, it's not given that male perspective, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the kind of yeah. really brilliant thing about it. And she can see them for, she can see it for what, because she's a little bit on the outside, she can actually see it for what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I loved her, loved her so much. I mean, I love your scenes with Austin, I think they're amazing, but I, I love Mike Faust as Danny, and yeah, I think I that's the most beautiful and brilliant bit of casting in that film. He's, He's amazing. He's fantastic. And I have to say, it's just like the most wonderful person because a lot of my a lot of my scenes were a lot of like her kind of bigger monologues where you know Danny's asking her questions yeah. and she's um, telling this story. And there were a lot of days where I was so in my own head, you know, and like you know yeah. going through things. And yeah, totally. and he was just like to have an actor who's so um, receptive and generous and fun yeah. and just like was there all the time um yeah i'm a big so fan of mike's good in west i know side story. i know I, oh my god i know so good in west side story <laughs> he's um, so talented oh my god so talented <laughs> um right before we run out of time a couple of quick questions um do you have a favorite score or a score that you can go back to from a film <gasps> one oh that's gosh. i don't know maybe from childhood that you might remember of being a kind of real you can say cats if you want <laughs> i might have to just for the purpose of this interview <laughs> Um, what about what soundtrack in your world at the minute? What are you listening to? What am I listening to at the minute? I'm listening to a lot of Cleo Soul um, at the moment. Um, Do you find when you're either preparing for things, you have to clear out noise in a way? Or do you kind of relish mm. bringing in things to kind of oh, yeah, colour no. that preparation in yeah, a way? Yeah, I relish bringing things in. Um, Because I find it interesting. I find sometimes when you're about to start something new, things will naturally come in. Or it's just that you're being, your eyes are a little more open and you're, 
and you're open to seeing things so like things can kind of come up I'm realizing as well like I'm someone who like even if it's just like a like a kind of meditative music like Mm. I'm especially like spending a lot of time on my own like if I'm in the house like having something like that playing in the background really can't like just makes me feel good yeah you know like because yeah. it's like this like so much space and you're on your own so I think music just generally like is is plays a big part in good companion. in my life yeah exactly um well now that you, well exec producing on this as well it gives you the more power to make that musical role happen yes you just need to manifest I, I yeah you're right actually just make it happen it's right here it's this you. is <laughs> there it's right there um it's so wonderful to chat to you i love you yeah you so too. much and, um, I, I can't wait for the musical i'm there with bell we'll be back <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna come dress as the rom tum tiger next time imagine but we've got that on camera right we've got, we've got that on camera yeah oh thanks so much my thank darling. You. Thank